Thailand to Costa Rica to uh, to the other side of the world. And w- right now it's 12 midnight in the Philippines, and your time there is past 10 a.m. Correct? Yeah, Arvin, it's 10 a.m. and 10 a.m. in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, would you like to greet my friends, my viewers in offshore chat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oi, uh, kumusta kapo? Um, my name is Kenneth, um, and I am so excited to be here uh, talking a little bit with Arvin, and I hope guys you're doing great as well. Thank you. I'm so excited to have a chat with you again. That's, uh, I think that's the same time that you are here in the Philippines, right? Yeah, exactly one year ago yeah. I was in the Philippines, that's right. August 2nd. Right. And for everyone's um, information, uh, Kenneth is my colleague in Teletech. And we also became roommates in Manila. Yeah, Metro, <laughs> Metro Manila. <laughs> and speaking of Manila, um, how was your experience in the Philippines? Well, um, it was nice. I had a great time, uh, even though many of my friends in Costa Rica and some some other places told me, don't ever go to the Philippines. <laughs> I don't know why. For what reason? Uh, oh, because they told me that uh, I I had a chance to be kidnapped kidnapped by the <laughs> by someone, and I said, no way. Uh, how come uh, someone will do that to me? And then I started reading, investigating a little bit. And, and as soon as I uh, landed off, um, I started to see the people, the environment, the feelings, and everything was so good. Everything went, went good, like expected. Uh, I had no issues. Everything is super great in, the, in, in Manila, in the Philippines. But prior to uh, going to the, to the Philippines or Manila, um, what was your impression about the Philippines? Mm, OK. Um, what happened that if you my what I can say is that if you don't know the Philippines, don't talk about the Philippines. That's all, because because we we may think that the Philippines is just a small dot on the map, mm-hmm. and it is not like that. Uh, I was so impressed to find out that it's a huge country. It's it's <laughs> more than one hundred million people. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so. Before going to the Philippines, I was thinking, okay, it's just a small place, um, really easy to to go through, to walk, mm. right? But um, as soon as I uh, arrived to the Philippines, then I realized it is not like that. Actually, my time spent in the Philippines it was three months, yeah. three months or something, and that's that's nothing. That's not enough. I mean, you, you need like a one year or two to to know, yeah, to explore the Philippines. Why did you choose the Philippines? Number one, because of, of the work, of the job, yeah. right? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, so I had to go there and then I continued working. Mm-hmm. And then um, I am part of the organization as well, uh, a youth organization that it's called IYF. You can find it in the Philippines as well. So I decided to go to the Philippines as well to volunteer myself to the Filipinos. Um, in what other places have you been to, and what is your favorite? Oh uh, yeah, paper? I went to. I went to well, for it, I went to all Manila, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like a Spanish city. You call it like that way. Intramuros. Intramuros. Yeah, I remember about Intramuros. Then I went to some other places. Now, the first uh, month trip, I would say it was to Sagada, right? Yeah. I went to Sagada and I was able to, to see by myself the hanging coffins of Sagada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it's really nice because you don't, you don't have that in, in, in another country, right? It's only right. in the Philippines that you have the, the, the coffins right there, mm-hmm. right? And I was able to, to experience all the Sagada as well. It was a great time. It was a great time. I spent a weekend there. Um, and then I went to Lipa. Yeah. <laughs> I went to your city. It was, it's a nice city for me. It's a great city because um, it's like Costa Rica. Yeah. I went to Kanamoan Island and it was, it was great. Um, 
I was able also to see some guides from Survivor, mm -hmm. the Survivor um, show that they have. Yeah, and I had a great time in 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 Beacon as well. Beacon, as well. yeah. How about the food? Did you like the Philippine food? Uh, at first, I have to admit it that it was not my the best food, right? Okay. Uh, but then, but then I said I need to eat something. Okay, so I started to eat in. Um, the typical Filipino food that you guys have, like, like you you guys have a lot of soups, right? Yeah, yeah. With tamarindo, everything, <laughs> you know, tamarind. Tamarind, um, yes. Tamarind, yeah. We call it tamarindo in Spanish. Uh, um, so, yeah. every time that I used to eat uh, a soup, I was test I was tasting something different, and it was the tamarind. So then I realized that most of the food uh, comes with tamarinds and all of that. And, and I fell in love with dynamite. For me, it's the best. Dynam I love dynamite. And, um, and I also was able to see that you guys are 24-7. That's something, I mean, you're a CD9. You guys, uh, yeah, everything is open pretty much 24-7. 24 hours, yeah. It's because of yeah. our industry. Teletech, uh -huh. for example. There's a lot of people in the Philippines, so. Yeah, so that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great because if you're starving or you want to just go to a restaurant like at midnight or mm -hmm. 1 a.m., you can still go. One day I took the MRT and then, I don't know, I was, I was recording something in Spanish and then a guy next to me, a Filipino next to me, told me, do you speak Spanish? And then the guy was speaking perfect Spanish. So we had a conversation in Spanish, but it was only, he was fluently in Spanish. During my time when I was in high school, we have this subject in Spanish, but that's only like uh, one, one hour per day. So you will, you will not really learn much of the Spanish, but some of our words are from the Spanish. And if you can yeah. see the background, it's a Spanish house, right? Old Spanish house. Yeah, actually, that's why I ask you, I ask you um, offline, uh, what was the picture that you have behind you in the mm -hmm. background? Because uh, that's really similar to uh, some of the Costa Ricans buildings that we have, you know, that we were conquered by, by, by Spaniards as well. Yeah. Um, and it looks pretty much the same. So that's I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of this kind of houses in the Philippines before, and uh, this place that we've got in with Kai and Jeff, it's called Las Casas Filipinas de Acusar, and um, it was amazing it, because uh, they were able to preserve the culture of the Philippines during the Spanish time. And what, what made you realize the difference and the similar, similarities between Costa Ricans and Filipinos? Oh, uh, yeah. I would say, for example, if you, if you type uh, Costa Rican guides or Costa mm -hmm. Rican culture, most of the time you will have that we are Pura Vida. That's, that's our slogan. If you said this is Pura Vida, it means this is great. Arben it's Pura Vida, meaning Arben it's great. Mm -hmm. That's the real, the, the, the real meaning, right? So I would say that if I have to find something to link Costa Rica and the Philippines, it's that we are really friendly. Yeah, we are Pura Vidas. Philippines and Costa Ricans are Pura Vidas, yeah. Okay. And how do you find Metro Manila? Because uh, you mentioned earlier that <laughs> there's a lot of threats and something scary about the metropolis. So how do you find it? <laughs> Well, first, it was the buildings. You guys have a lot of buildings, right? Mm -hmm. And I am no way, I'm, I am not getting used to, to live in a building. Actually, in the, in the, in the same flat, in the same apartment yeah. that we were, uh, it was more than, how many floors uh, had the... 52? Uh, 52? Yeah. That's a, that's a huge thing. I don't know. The biggest building that we have in Costa Rica, it's around 30 floors or something or maybe more, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But that's the first thing that I saw. I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of, this, there are a lot of buildings. Everything mm -hmm. is huge here. And then um, another thing 
that I found very different is that every time that I used to go to a place, it was crowded. Right? I also, before traveling, I also got this this book. Yeah, I think I, I saw it. You saw it? Yeah. Uh, I didn't buy this. Uh, a friend, a friend of mine uh, visited the Philippines like three years ago and he told mm -hmm. me, okay, this book will help you a lot. And it's a really great book because um, it gives you pretty much all the information that you need about the Philippines. Also, if you see the, if you can read the, the back of the book, mm -hmm. it gives you some information about Mindanao. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says essential safety information for Mindanao, right? The friend of mine, when I, when I told him I was traveling to the Philippines, he told me, okay, don't go to Mindanao because you know what's happening in Mindanao, right? Um, so I would say that's the, one of the main places that you need to know about the Philippines, just to be careful and not go there. But all the rest, I mean, it's awesome. Um, I also spent a great time in Palawan Mm -hmm. Yeah, I during, went the to, storm, during the storm, right? <laughs> yeah, it was my <laughs> yeah, it was my first time um, experiencing by myself what a typhoon is. Right in Costa Rica, we don't have typhoons; we only have the storms and hurricanes. But typhoons, like the one that I experienced in in Palawan, mm -hmm. never in my life. So I can say that now, I know. I know how strong the nature uh, can be, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to show you this uh, gift that I got from, from someone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a jeepney. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't opened yet. I want to keep it like like that in, in, inside the box. Oh, uh, but it's a jeepney. And I had a great time with the jeepneys as well. If you ask me, what's the number one thing that you can take from the Philippines? It's that smile at every time, at every moment, like the Filipinos do, yeah. Yeah, and that's what actually most of the foreigners will tell about the Filipinos. Um, it's our resiliency and being happy despite of the challenges that we have. We are still yeah. smiling. Yeah, and that's something, um, I know that you would travel, I, I am 100% positive that you would travel to my country one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. expecting that. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is my plan this year. However, we have COVID and there's a lot of um, schedules already that has been canceled. So I need to move it next year, early next year, hopefully. So I'm hoping that um, probably in 2021, I should be able to visit your country. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's good also that you visit America and Central America as well. So that way you can share more about the um, our culture to the Philippines, mm -hmm. and we also know about a Filipino in Central America, right? That should yeah. be great. And um, yeah, and that's all. Um, I, I would say um, I took a lot of experiences from the Philippines, but this one, the one that you guys are always happy, disregard of that situation, that's something really important that, that maybe in America we don't have. Thanks again for your time. And I'm hoping that um, I should be able to see you in Costa Rica probably next year or you coming back to the Philippines again. And yeah, I need to. I, I, yeah, not a problem, Arvin. It's a great pleasure that you invited me uh, actually to talk a little more about my experience, also to talk about my country mm -hmm. and also to let people know about how great the Philippines is. I tell this and, and the Filipino um, uh, walang anuman po yeah walang anuman po I still remember some words yeah uh